Good morning, SBA Central. Welcome back to school. It's a Monday morning. So happy to see you. These, uh, this is a continuation of our um, our theme launch morning homeroom devotion. Sorry, that was a little hard to get out. It's early in the morning for me, but I'm having fun. Welcome to school. Welcome to class. Um, today we'll be continuing on talking about. Um, the theme made to thrive and as it applies to us going forward so for today we're going to turn to John 15 if you want to go there you can otherwise it'll be on the screen here I just can't read it with that little thing there so um, this is from John 15 I am the true vine and my father is the gardener this is Jesus talking he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be more or even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I've spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Oops, wrong one. Remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the true vine. You are are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples. So if we look at that very last line, all of this, made to thrive, this theme, this devotion, everything about it, is not for the school to feel better about itself. It's actually so that we, in our lives as disciples, can bear much fruit and give God the glory. When you thrive, you are not giving yourself glory. It's not about making your name even greater. It's about giving God glory with your life, being a living sacrifice. Okay, I find that very cool that it's not about me to live up to it. Uh, Mr. Matt, as he was, we're actually going to talk about that verse for the next two times. But Mr. Matt talked about how he wanted, wants his plants to flourish and bear fruit. You remember that gardeners oftentimes, as he is, help plants bear fruit by giving it enough water, um, nutrients, fertilizer, sunlight, and then by pruning it. Trees that are healthy will grow very quickly and will put all of their plants energy and nutrients and everything that it is into growing taller and bigger and getting as much sunlight as it can. This isn't bad, right? We want trees to grow. We want them to grow big. But the energy and the nutrients required for this tree to grow big will take away from the nutrients and energy needed for this tree to bear fruit. So gardeners, in their wisdom, will clip or, or prune the branches off that are growing too fast or um, undesired growth through like the little branches along the side. Um, or they will take the branches that are diseased or already dying and they'll clip those off so the tree doesn't try to revive or fight the disease there and it'll just help the tree grow. Um, with the parts of the branches that are growing fast, the disease gone, um, all these things, the tree will bear more fruit with less branches than it will if it had them. So very simply, the the focus is on fruit. The tree goes from growing out and doing as much as it can to focusing on fruit. So all of these, um, um, all the energy and resources used by this tree now are going towards fruit. And it bears a lot more fruit. I actually, you'll be quite amazed by my ability. Look at that. I put a picture of a tree with fruit on there for you. It'll bear fruit. So in our passage, Jesus is talking to his disciples. A disciple is someone who follows the teaching of Jesus and seeks to follow him with their life. So Jesus tells his disciples, you, uh, tells his disciple that he is the true vine and we need to remain in him. According to John Piper, and I'll read this for you, um, what does it mean uh, when you ask, what does it mean to abide in the vine or to be um, attached to it to remain in Jesus and so he says abiding in the vine means receiving and believing and trusting in the words of Jesus 
It means receiving the love and joy of Jesus for the Father and for his people. Abiding in the vine means sharing the joy, the love, and the word of Jesus to those around us. However, we can only thrive if we remain in the vine. So we share everything with it, but it says these things can only come if we remain in him. If we are um, receiving the love and joy from Jesus and so giving that on to those around us. Many of you know that I spent most of my life training as an athlete with big dreams of playing professionally. For a long time, I, through my desire sport, was I thought it was to give God glory and my desire to use him to use me. And in many ways, God did use me through sports, and which is great. Praise him. However, after I had my severe concussion and I was out for 17 months recovering, I realized that I had made sport my idol and that in order for me to abide in Jesus I it needed to be pruned it it needed to be cut off and so um, the Bible often refers to this part of cutting a part away of your life away as dying to your old self and taking up the new so I'm dying to the parts of me that are killing me that are keeping me from bearing fruit and then taking up the new the ones that Jesus wants for me the pruning of God. And that means cutting off the parts of my life that are growing too fast or not bearing the fruit of Jesus instead of placing that energy that would have gone to sports or to video games or those other things into following Jesus. And as his disciple, we want to bear much fruit by doing so. In my life, I can see the benefits of being pruned to follow Jesus better. However, as I'm sitting here, and I know that there are many areas of my life that need to be given to the Lord or pruned, um, that it's um, it's more of a simple way to describe to you what it means to be a Christian. As a Christian, we are called to continuous growth into the likeness of Christ. And sometimes it's easy. Sometimes it's easy to cut out parts of our lives for Jesus, but oftentimes it's hard, and it's and it seems like it's never ending. And that's that's a good thing. But we will learn through it all that it is worth it, and it is um, by far the greatest joy we can have is to be following Jesus more than fame or anything else. So, um, uh, teachers, homeroom teachers, please pause the video now and um, work through as many of these questions as you can about um, how are you growing today in Jesus? Are there any parts of your life that need to be pruned or cut out? Do you feel like you are following Jesus in such a way that you are growing to desire what he wants for you? And how can you show the love, grace, and joy of Jesus to those around you today? After you finish discussing these, Teachers, please close in prayer. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.